In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started using the tabular data stream protocol for the common data service, specifically how to use it with Power BI and making real time updatable reports using Power Apps. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, if you actually click in here, it references you to the documentation and the documentation says you need to do a couple of things. You have to turn on that feature and you have to make sure that your environment is at least up to 17437. So how do you do that? Where do you do that? Let's go ahead and take a look. If I actually go into Power Apps and go to the admin center of Power Apps, Next thing I need to do is actually select the environment that I want to actually go out and do these reports in. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the premium demo tenant. And you'll see that the database version is 177754. If we go back and take a look, it needs to be 17437. So we're actually several builds beyond that. The next thing that you need to do is go ahead and turn on that in that setting. Now in this case, I've already done it, but I'll show you where you find it. So if I go ahead and look at product, features, scroll to the bottom, you'll see that there is one called TDS endpoint. There you go. And this one's already been enabled. Now what, where, where do we go from here? Well, the easiest way is going back into powerapps.com, going into data, going into entities, you'll actually see that the team has done a great job of analyzing Power BI, and that actually creates a template for you. Now, um, I wouldn't probably use the template in most cases because it assumes that you're gonna start from a green field. A lot of times I'm actually gonna to wanna to go ahead and reference that common data service uh, to an existing report that I've already got. So how do you do that? Where do you get started with that? Let's actually see if we can take a look at this and I'll show you what, what we're doing here is if I go ahead and look at file, let's actually hit cancel um, and see what it does. Uh, let's see if it actually has the settings. Uh, options, setting, data source settings. And if it's not here, it, it's actually this one here is what that template pointed at. So you'll see what they've done is actually pointed to the environment, which is this is my environment name, and appended a, five, five, a port of 55558. So that's all we have to do to get started. So let's go ahead and copy this. So where is my admin center? Here it is. And I wanted to take a look at my environments and I'm just gonna copy it out, making it easier for me. Click on that URL, copy that, there we go. And I can go ahead and close that. Going to Power BI Desktop, which happens to be on a different screen over here. And I can go ahead and say, uh, get data right there. And even though we're going against the common data service, since they've enabled the TDS endpoint, I'm gonna actually reference uh, SQL Server as my data source. Remember I pointed out that the port is 558. Um, this actually has the protocol in the beginning, I don't need that. And the database is indeed the name of the, um, the environment, but it's optional. So if we actually leave that, uh, leave that B, it'll actually fill itself out. So let's go ahead and hit OK at this point. What we should see is my entities. In this case, what I want to do is take a look at my orders I've actually done for my app in a day application. So if I go ahead and take a look at my Power Apps, I can see all the entities in this common data service, including all those from the common data model. Um, in this case, I think it's actually called new orders. Let's see if I have one called new device order. There it is. So let's go ahead and add my new device order and say load. I won't even bother waiting for it to come up. And it's going to apply those changes. And what we're going to do is quickly create a report. At this point, I'm actually going to do a plug for the guys at PowerBI.Tips, um, making this look a little bit nicer. I'm going to use one of their scrims. And as soon as this brings in my new device order uh, entity. I'll actually going to hit this and actually go ahead and set my background equal to one of the scrims. I think Seth created one for me called Orange. That yeah, may have been Mike, but one of these guys did. So if I go here and I go to page background, I say add image and oh, there it is. I'm already in the right place. Let's use, I don't know, let's use this one. We'll make it really easy today. And uh, what we're going to do at this point is go ahead and set the transparency to something uh, a little bit less. Perfect. Now, what we're going to want to do in this case, just bring over some information. Let's say that I want to know uh, 
what people are buying. Uh, what are they spending money on? So if I go ahead and look at the name of the items, um, what is it? It's new name and I drag it right over there. I think it's gonna try and bring it into a table. I don't know that I want a table. Yeah, I did. Um, I probably want a, a column chart. So let's actually go ahead. No, I, actually I want a stacked column chart and then um, probably look at price. And again, this is not really a, how do you get started with Power BI? But what we should see at this point is what are what are the people in my environment actually doing as far as my app in a day application ordering for um, for products? And you'll see that it looks like they're spending their most money on hard drives, and then the next one is staplers apparently. Staplers, oh, you know, it's an up and coming thing. Okay, so um, now what? It's done, right? I've I've got a report against a common data service, and if I see it updated, I'll automatically have my report updated. But the interesting thing is, is now I can use Power Apps right here to go out and do new entries. Actually, that doesn't look great. Let's get rid of this background. Oh, that bothers me. Uh, background off. Oh, much, much better. Okay, so let's show you how to do that. Now, we've been doing this in Power BI Desktop. Let's go ahead and go into the service because actually it's a little bit better experience if you publish this into the service and then add your Power App in online. You could do it here, it's just it's a better experience. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. And I think I actually have one of these that's close to already done. It's a little bit different layout, um, but here's that same, that same exact report. What we're gonna do here is add that Power App. So let's go ahead and draw over my Power App and or bring in the Power App visual. Resize a little bit, there we go. And I wanna take a look at, I don't know, um, probably that name. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna be doing any filtering, so it's not terribly important, but that's enough. Okay, now that we've added the columns, it's actually asking uh, what environment we wanna use. In that case, we actually were using the premium demo tenant. So let's go ahead and hit that drop down and select that same environment. There we go. And now we can actually select that premium demo tenant, the same one that is what this reports in and that entity's in. And I'm gonna choose create new. This is important if I actually wanted to do refresh that report in Power BI. So again, you need to do create new if you wanna see that refresh method hanging off there. So we're gonna go ahead and create this brand new, um, uh, this brand new application. And this is gonna give us a gallery and a form. Let's go ahead and actually uh, skip all this and get rid of these. And actually I'll show you creating that from scratch. The other thing I wanna do is get some sort of theme that aligns itself a little bit. Maybe this brownie one kind of does. Okay, now what I can do is go insert, forms, edit, and uh, we wanna actually bring in the fields. So what are the fields? Uh, we wanna get that, oh, we need to actually reference the data source first and it was called orders or new orders, I think, orders, device orders, there we go. Um, and what we could do here is now reference the correct fields. Now, I don't think I want this created on, um, not terribly important that we add that. Name is important because that's actually what we're ordering and the price. I think that's the only two fields I really need for this particular application, so we're gonna make it really easy. Now that I've got my fields, I just need to go out and put it into the database. So let's, last time I did this, I did icons. So we're gonna do buttons today. Um, that's not, I don't want that color. That's not the color I want. So let's go ahead and do my fill. Where's F fill? And what is that? It's like a dark orange, dark orange. Good, okay. And I uh, made them too big. Ugh. Good enough. Okay, and we're gonna go out and change this one to new and enter. And this one's gonna be submit. And what are we gonna do for new is what we're gonna do is say new form. New form. Oh, we're actually putting it in the fill. I actually want the on select. What am I thinking? There it is, on select and say new form. And then this form that we drug over a second ago is called form one. And this one here is just submit form and form one, just like we did a second ago. Um, and then also, remember I talked, I mentioned the Power BI refresh. 
let's go ahead and actually issue that so that way we can bring in the results that we just added. And we're kind of done at this point. Let's go ahead, uh, let's resize this, it's bothering me a little bit. And boom, save this. And we'll call this one CDS2. Um, I did it for the Austin user group last night, so this is the second one. Give it that kind of that orangey look and choose save and save. Now, if I go back into my uh, Power BI report in the online service, I just by hitting save, it should bring that in and make it playable for us. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a, another order. Let's go ahead and add, looks like pencils are actually just, they're not getting the love. Let's, let's order us a pencil. We we'll need to actually change the background to zero as well. So we're gonna go out and say pencils, kind of spill it, right? And we're gonna go out and buy, I don't know, maybe $50, $56 apparently of pencils. What we should see is that this number changes and what we should see, oh, hasn't changed. Oh, there it goes. And what we should see is that pencils are actually are now the number one sold item in my supplies list. So this is now updating Power BI directly from my Power App using the common data service via that brand new TDS endpoint, allowing us to create a Power Query report. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video.